Which you guys today we're taking a look at how we can create the perfect Windows 11 install. We're going to be using a free piece of software called ET Optimizer. This tool is going to allow us to modify our own ISO for our Windows 11 install. It's also going to create a local account with all of our settings that we want. All our privacy concerns are going to be taken care of. All of the apps and bloatware is going to be removed from the operating system. And of course, it's going to make a load of tweaks to the operating system. And this is going to take care of all of our privacy concerns like telemetry and all of the other settings that you don't want on the system, which is harvesting information and sending it back to Microsoft. So this is what it's going to take care of. Unfortunately, for these particular types of software, they do get flagged by antivirus software. Antivirus software may detect as a threat. He does warn about this. So it's important that you do back up all your data and you take full responsibility for what you're doing. And that's why I've got this warning message up on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to download the actual software. We might need to disable our antivirus software while we're creating our ISO file. And that's what he talks about here on his website. He also puts on here a load of information about what it does, uh, performance tweaks, privacy tweaks. It's not just these few here. There's hundreds of tweaks that it's doing on the back end. And this is taking care of all the advertising ID and all of the other stuff that you might not need on your system. It's going to take care of all of that during the installation process. So let's go ahead and download uh, our software. There's an executable version here, and straight away you can see that it's being flagged by our browser. So I'm going to keep this file, and it allows us to download the software. I have disabled Windows Defender because it will uh, alert a warning when you're downloading this particular type of software because it's an executable file, and it's an unknown publisher. So what we need to do here is download our Windows 11 ISO from Microsoft's website because that's important to use the official uh, ISO from Microsoft. So we're going to go ahead and select Windows 11 Multi Edition here. We're going to click Download, and this is going to tell us to select our language. You can choose whatever language you like. I'm going to go for English International. And once we've done that, we can now get to the stage where we download our ISO. So let's go ahead and download this onto the computer. It's going to take a bit of time. So what we'll do is we'll skip forward and we'll get to the desktop and we'll get this all prepped. So there we go. So we've got our ISO file right here. And we also have our etoptimizer.exe. Now, I have disabled Windows Defender. You can see Publisher Unknown, and that is the reason why it will probably flag this if you try to run it with Windows Defender on. Now, whether you use this software is entirely up to you. Uh, I'm just showing you how this software works. You can choose whether you want to use it or not. But there's three tabs at the bottom here, Performance, Visual, and Privacy. I'm going to leave all of these on because I want all these settings uh, added to my ISO. So we're going to create an ISO here, but I'll also show you a video on how to use this software as well uh, on another video. But for this one, we're going to be making our ET optimized uh, ISO file. So let's select that version right here and select the uh, ISO. A blue screen will pop up. This is your PowerShell window. So this is what it's doing right here. I'm not going to go through exactly what it's all doing on the back end here because it's self-explanatory. It says it right on the screen. And if you don't want to use programs like this because of fear of uh, malware and things like that, then don't use them. That's why the warning sign is there. So you can decide whether you want to use this particular software or not. This is just a tutorial on how to do something, not you should do it. You can make that adult decision yourself whether you want to use this or not. And this is why it's just an educational video. Anyway, we'll let that carry on uh, with what it's doing right here. And once it's completed, we should have an ISO file which we can install onto our system. Now, we'll show you the end result and install this onto a virtual machine so you can see exactly what the end result is and what's actually happening. So it's just writing out the ISO file to a designated folder called Copy to ISO. And now we're done. And now we're going to close off this and take a look. There's our ISO file right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, boot to this and basically install it. And uh, if you want to create a bootable USB flash drive, you can do it at this stage. You can use Rufus. I'm not going to go through that in this video because I've showed you that a million times. So what we're going to do is boot to this and get it installed on the system. You can use this ISO on unsupported hardware as well as supported hardware as well. So just go through the motions right here. Set up the language. It's going to get a few things ready. And what it will do 
is it's going to let us put in our product key here. So let's go ahead and say I don't have a product key. You can select your version right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select Windows 11 Pro. And we're going to go ahead and let that get things ready. It's going to skip through a few things here, obviously, because uh, it's already got that set up in the ISO file. You may see searching for disks here. What I did notice was this hung for a little while and people have complained saying it hasn't worked, but it has worked. You just got to be patient and then this window will populate. Uh, but just be patient. For some reason, it took a bit of while on this machine as well. So let's select our drive here. I'm going to just use the, the whole unallocated space here. Then you'll get the installing window screen popping up. I'll speed this process up so you don't have to sit back and wait. And we'll get through the installation part right here. Don't worry about bypassing uh, the Microsoft account. It will allow you to just give you a local account right here. You just put the name in and away you go. So now what it's doing, we're right at the desktop right here. It's now finished the installation. And as you can see, we've got a pretty clear uh, system. And again, it's removed a lot of the stuff that you don't need. Now, there's still media player inside here. And there's also Microsoft uh, store here and photos and paint and things like that. And I think that's a good thing because if you remove too much, some people might need that. So it's giving the people the option to quickly uninstall that if they don't want it. And if they do want it, it's already there. So this is a bare bones uh, system. It's been uh, taken down to a, a reasonable level, I think. And again, we can go to privacy and security. And a lot of this stuff has already been turned off, as you can see right here. A lot of the settings that may concern you are already disabled and set to uh, the all managed by your organization, as you would expect. So let's take a look at the task manager right here and take a look at the processes because people love to go on about their processes. And it's got 91 or 89 processes right here. Pretty decent. And uh, it's still doing some updates in the background. So you're going to see a bit of utilization there. That's pretty normal. And there is your memory that people like to look at as well. But they are the results after you've installed it using this ISO. I think it's pretty decent for what you're going to be getting. Uh, it's left some of the key programs that a lot of people might use. And even Microsoft Edge is left on the system. Again, if you remove it, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, because people will say they use it and some people say they don't. So it's left there. And if you want to remove it, you can go about doing that in your own way. Unfortunately, this will go into the category of riskware. The same for all the other tools that you've seen me show on this channel. And that includes Chris Titus text tool. Yes, that is riskware as well, because you have no clue of what it's do actually doing and it can break your operating system. Whether it be a script or an executable file, this will go into that riskware category where you're using it at your own risk. So use your common sense. If you know this is okay to use and you've tested it and looked into it, then by all means, go ahead and use it. Like all the other tools out there, there's plenty of them to choose from. Choose your own method that you like to use and stick with it. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. Uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who will join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on our Discord server for a chat. The link is in the video description. It's free to join. Anyway, bye for now.